The rumours were true. Sheffield United have been taken over by a group including some of their former stars, Kyle Walker, Billy Sharp, Phil Jagielka, Chris Basham and more, along with the help with some financial investors and local businesses, are now running the show here at Bramwell Lane. They've pledged to agree a deal of £50 million invested into our transfer budget for this window, but there are a couple of special terms that come with the cash. We can't sign Ollie Shaw and we can't sign Barry Walsh this season and we can only sign one of them next season. So yeah, Shaw and Walsh, neither will be returning this season and we can only get one of the two next season and from this next season onwards we'll be able to get the other one. Uh, the reason I've done this real briefly just to break the immersion in the fourth wall is because I have noticed quite a lot of comments throughout the course of this series saying please can you stop signing all the old, uh, old stars and the old legends uh, together in one go. Um, Surprising comments to read those, I must admit, because of course this is an old school career mode save where we do things in an old school way, and of course in my old school career modes I would do just that, but I've seen a lot of comments saying please don't sign them all in, in one go, so yeah, I appreciate that, and because of that I'm going to do it in a different way and spread it out as opposed to bringing them all in together in the same transfer. window. Hopefully uh, you guys are okay with that, and I'm just trying to please everyone really, it's very tough to do that, but um, yeah, I, I have noticed quite a few comments this series from people saying please don't sign them all in one go so there you go we have got the financial takeover we have had the investment deal uh, completed but again we will not be signing Shora Walsh in this transfer window. But regardless, £50 million into our budget now. Very excited to reinvest it. And it should be a very interesting final week in the January transfer window. Still for the first game of today's episode here, we will take on West Ham United at Bramwell Lane. Coming on the back of our fantastic 3-0 victory at Vicarage Road in the race for fourth place in the Premier League right now. Starting off this game, we'd look the brighter team, as you'd expect, looking really in control of things right from the first whistle. The fact we hadn't scored in the first half an hour was very frustrating indeed because we had so many chances, including a lovely build-up just a moment ago, but Tony failing to get away from the covering defender. And here, Elliot Harris heading this this cross over the bar as it was still nil-nil. So many opportunities being created in the opening half and now but my finishing simply wasn't there and that's a surprise considering how things have started off for us since we've returned here to Bramwell Lane but just past the half an hour mark after we win the ball back this was lovely to see. Ivan Tony assists Elliot Harris. That's right, the star of this series assists perhaps his young protege as Chopper Harris takes the first touch, puts his man on the floor and bends it into the top corner. And finally, after so many chances, we had the opening goal. 40 to 39, Tony to Harris, Sheffield United 1, West Ham 0. So in front finally after so many chances in the first half. And West Ham always got back on noble terms right before the break. Excellent save by Sam Hill here. Kept us leading by one, heading into the dressing room. And five minutes after the restart, still up by a single goal. We should have been two or three in it up and really home and dry at half time, really. Golden chance to make it two here, 51 minutes in. And it was that combination once again. This time Harris paying Tony back after he assisted him in the first first staff but as you can see despite the fantastic free ball by chopper here tony was indeed just offside and the goal was disallowed what a free ball by harry though. to fred the needle but sadly the goal was correctly ruled out Oh dear, after the VAR check. So still 1-0 to the Blaze, but again, it was all Sheffield United in this game. And the fact it was only leading, we were only leading by a goal to nil was so bloody annoying because we should have been absolutely in control. And after what happening at Hull just a week ago, I wanted to make sure we'd find that second goal not before long. And just a couple minutes later, after I had a goal disallowed for offside, this one counts. Ivan Tony drills it in to extend his scoring run since returning to Brown Lane. I don't know why the replay was cut short there. I might have pressed L1 and R on really quickly, but regardless, the goal does count. Tony gets his fourth since returning to Bramwell Lane in the league. What a return he has had here in his second stint at Sheffield United. So 2-0 to the Blades and surely now the points are in the bag. It was a long time coming really. We should have been home and dry a long time ago but now leading by two. Points in the bag. Should have become three right before the end of the game as well. Went on a nice little run here with Brandon Lewis but tried to round the goalkeeper but got it horribly horribly wrong as the keeper makes a good recovery save. And I must say I'm, I'm struggling to do that a lot more than I used to. You know in my old career mode saves rounding the goal 
goalkeeper was something was, I wouldn't call it a staple if you will, but it was something I did quite a lot. Nowadays in the new FIFAs, I just can't seem to round the goalkeepers with as much uh, success as I used to in previous FIFAs uh, gone by. Regardless, 2-0 uh, the final score. The, the group of ex-pros were in the stands watching the game. You saw Billy Sharp amongst the fans, Chris Basham in the Tony Curry stand as well. You know, the ex-pros were there at Brownwell Lane to watch us play, winning the game by four goals to nil. Brilliant, brilliant performance there and uh, proof that maybe we didn't even need the financial takeover, but we've got it. And after Luke Shaw gets sold for £23 million as well, there's now around £70 million in our transfer budget right now. And I must say, there's a lot of names on my list I wouldn't mind bringing back here to Brownwell Lane. Now, as we know, Shaw and Walsh are off-bounds this season, but Scott McKenna also can't join as he's recently joined Watford. But Jaden Bogle, Dean Henderson, I'd love Serge Koulibaly, and I know you guys would as well. I see the comments. I know you want Koulibaly to return, but it looks like he's on his way to Madrid right now as he's sadly out of our price range. Uh, Brennan Eze, uh, Zlatan's region, Jamal Lewis, Ben Godfrey now at Roma. There's a couple of others as well, Sangari, Duffy, and D. DCL. Not sure we need a new striker here, but I certainly wouldn't be against the DCL return. I guess we'll just have to wait and see. But again, £70 million on our budget right now. We still might sell one or two more players as well. I, I, I must say, guys, my, my main hope was that once the financial takeover was completed, we'd have enough money after Shaw's sale to get Serge Koulibaly as well. But unfortunately, I think he's just a little bit out of our price range this season. Maybe next season or perhaps the season afterwards. But he looks like he's on his way to the Bernabeu in, uh, in Spain and um, yeah, it's it's only right he goes to a massive club because he has developed so well, even without our help throughout the course of the series. But there's still a load of names on there as well. I wouldn't be against bringing back before the window slams shut. Still for our second and final game of today's episode, staying here at Bramwell Lane, but on the weekend now taking on Newcastle United here at Bramwell Lane. And as we know in the FA Cup here, drawn against the Magpies, they were very worried once we were drawn together because they know every single time we face them, them. This man scores against them. I think he has scored in every single game we've had against Newcastle United, and he extends that record here. Just eight minutes in, it's the shocker, Ivan Tony against one of his former clubs. One chance, one shot, one goal. Ivan Tony, every single time he faces the Magpies, gets a goal, and he gets one there to open the scoring. So no such troubles in this game, like against West Ham, already leading by a single goal to nil inside the first ten minutes. And surprise, surprise, it's the least shot thing about him. Ivan Tony gets the goal and makes it 1-0. So in front in this game very early in our FA Cup fourth round clash and really again like, like against West Ham looking in control for the most part. However Newcastle were dominating the possession battle and were getting some chances as well. But one thing I will say is that our defence in this first half was absolutely superb. We were blocking every single shot coming in on our goal. Two blocks there. First from Tony and then from Lukimi as Aaron's shot is easily caught by uh, Creel. Is that how you pronounce that? Creel, our, uh, our backup goalkeeper. But regardless, we were still leading, uh, sorry, Creel even, but so uh, we were still leading by a goal to nil. And again, the Magpies did have chances in this game, but they weren't really taking them. And the 76th minute frustration was beginning to get to our visitors here. They were beginning to boil over their tempers, that is. And this was just cynical. And as soon as I saw this, I was like, Ivan, Ivan, off you come, mate. Off you come. You got yourself the goal. We got Liverpool on Wednesday night in the second leg of the Carabao Cup semi-final. It's pretty clear they can't stop you, so they're trying to injure you. Let's take you off for a precautionary method, safety more than anything really, as he makes way and uh, yeah, we still led by a goal to nil. But with four minutes to go, chance to wrap the game up, seal the victory and put us into that for the next round and we would do just that. In a game we didn't create that many chances, it was important we were clinical and with three minutes to go, our only real opportunity in the second half fell to young Brandon Lewis as the boys off the bench linked up for our second goal. Oliver McBurney, who has had a fantastic start since I have returned, gets the assist and plays it through to his fellow substitute and Lewis drills at home to make it 2-0. So final score, Sheffield United 2, Newcastle United 0. I must admit though, not the best of performances out there, that's for sure. Like against Hull in the previous round, we only scraped through against the championship side via a replay. This wasn't a great display either. To be fair to the Magpies, give them credit. They came here, they played pretty well. And on another day, 
probably could have knocked us out. In the end, we were a little bit more clinical and our defense was a little bit better. That's why we make it through. We're into the fifth round of the FA Cup as we continue our progress in the Cups. And of course, right now, level with Watford on, uh, on uh, the points and goal difference record in the race for fourth. 90 minutes away from a place in the Carabao Cup final with a second leg coming on Wednesday night. And into the fifth round of the FA Cup, it's been all smiles since we've returned to Brownwell Lane. Do we need to make new signings here? Well, with £70 million pounds and still a week remaining in the January transfer window, I think it's safe to say at least one player will be coming in. But that was this episode of Career Mode, guys. So, a big thank you for watching. If you have enjoyed it, and if you did enjoy this episode, please drop a like. Most love to you all. Have a fantastic day, and I'll see you for the next episode of Career Mode featuring the second leg of the Carrot Cup semi final against Liverpool very soon.